Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. 1976. For some of us, that's just a year in a history book. But for some of us, it's actually our history. We've lived through it. 1976, the year of the American Bicentennial. Rocky, the first one, won the Academy Award for Best Picture. Gasoline had shot up 59 cents a gallon. And there was a Georgia peanut farmer who became the United States president. The first Ebola virus epidemic took shape in Africa, as well as a new disease called Legionnaires sprouted up in America. Then there were a couple of guys named Steve who started a little company out in California, named it after a fruit, an apple, and the VHS cassette recorder was invented. Oh. There was one other big thing that happened in 1976. There was a group of 20th century tenants tending the vineyard in a part of God's vineyard called Sunderland, Maryland. And they formally established First Lutheran Church of Calvert County. And for 44 years now, this congregation of God's people planted at the intersection of routes two and four, has worked the vineyard and returned to him good fruit. And today, we are blessed and privileged to honor the work of all those tenants who've come before us over these last 44 years. And we do that by thanking and praising God for the work of two of them, Jim and Ardeth Harley, charter members along with their children, who faithfully responded to God's call to tend his vineyard in so many ways, through the music ministry, through our Little Lambs Preschool, by serving in leadership on many of our boards, by caring for human and spiritual care, by teaching and, of course, through their worship. Jim and Ardeth are among the many who have gathered here in God's presence at First Lutheran Church to faithfully produce good fruit in its season for God and His kingdom. And today we give thanks to Jim and Ardeth for their faithful example as they move to a new part of God's vineyard in Washington, D.C. Listening to Jesus' parables of the vineyard, it's clear to, to see all who followed the lead of these charter members in the images Jesus chooses for the workers in those vineyards. We see those whose work has been, who've been called faithfully to work through the heat of the day. We've seen those who, though it may not have always been easy or convenient, have spoken loudly through their faithful actions, saying, Yes, Father, by doing His will. And today, Jesus tells the chief priests and the temple leaders in our gospel, Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people producing its fruits. My brothers and sisters in Christ, we are those people that God has chosen and given his vineyard to. And he has given us all that goes with it. Our time, our talent, our treasure, and his word, which guides us in the use of these gifts our Father has given us so that we can produce the fruit that he longs for. However, as we receive these gifts from God to use, we can at times forget that 
Like the tenants in the, vineyard, in the parable Jesus tells, we can forget that the gifts aren't necessarily ours. These gifts are actually God's. You see, tenants don't own the vineyard, let alone the produce the vineyard makes. It's the master of the house who owns it all. The tenants are only there because of the generosity of the master, giving them all that he has. And in exchange, he simply asks for a portion to come back to him. However, as the crop comes in, we see that those tenants have forgotten whose crop it really is. It's like the story of a harried businessman. He sits, decides he's going to take a break in the middle of the day, go to the coffee shop and grab a little pick-me-up. Well, after setting his computer down to save his table, he goes up to the counter, orders his pumpkin spice latte grande style, and picks up five of those double chocolate fudge brownies. He hurriedly gathers all his things up and goes back to his table, only to find that his space has been invaded by a mom and her little kid sitting in a baby stroller. A bit annoyed at the intrusion, the man fires up his laptop, tries to ignore the intruders as he savors his PSL. Well, his eyes are fixed to the screen, and he reaches blindly to grab one of his brownies, and he feels a hand there. It's the hand of the mom. How rude, he thinks to himself, as he snatches up one of the brownies and gobbles it down. Well, having inhaled the brownie without even tasting it, he reaches out to grab another. And what does he feel? The hand again. Ah, oh, the nerve of some people. As he tries to refocus on his work, he eyes the last brownie on the table. Well, the woman must have realized there was only one brownie left because she reached out for it, broke it in half, gave half to the man while she finished the other half, smiled kindly, and made her way to the door. What in the world? The man thought angrily. Well, so much for my pick-me-up and my little time out. He threw away the rest of his latte, slammed his computer shut, and then tried to stuff it into his computer bag as it met resistance, and he realized why. In his computer bag were his brownies. In that instant, he was horrified. He realized that he had been helping himself to the mom's brownies. He ate half of her brownies, maybe even one of those brownies intended for her child. He took from a mom who willingly gave them up, even smiling kindly as she left. Are we ever like this harried businessman or the tenants in Jesus' parable? Forgetting where our things actually come from? How often do we proudly say, look at what I have achieved. Look at all the stuff that I have acquired. While forgetting that the source of all of our time, all of our talent, all of our treasure even, in times like now, in times when this hurricane of uncertainty is swirling all around us, social turmoil, political unrest, pandemics, and economic upheaval, Satan lays before us temptations, the temptations of self-preservation, self-defense, self-protection. He blinds us with uncertainty, ambition, and greed. 
He leads us to think that we need to keep all that we have to preserve ourselves. In these times, we can forget whose stuff this all truly is. And we can forget the purposes for which he has given it to us. God tells us through his prophets, through the apostles, and through his son, Jesus, that he will care for all of our needs. So don't worry about it. Jesus says, do not be anxious. Your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all of these things will be added to you. Our Father in heaven gives us all that we have. It's ours to use. But it's not ours to keep. The tenants had forgotten the master's generous provision, which enabled them to provide for all of their needs. The master didn't send his servants into the vineyard to take everything from them. The master simply wanted a portion of the fruit in return for all that he had given them. Yet the tenants weren't happy with their deal. No, they wanted all of it. They wanted every last grape, and so they beat and killed the servants. And when they saw the sun come, their blind ambition and their greed stepped in. And they said, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and have his inheritance. And they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. With these words, Jesus prophesied about what was going to happen to him in a mere three days. God sent his son Jesus into the vineyard to collect the fruits that the chief priests and the elders were supposed to be producing in response to his father's love. The fruits of repentance for their idolatry of self. The fruits of faith and trust that God would provide and continue to provide for all of their needs. The fruits of faithful worship and praise to God for all that he has given them and promises to continue to give to them. But they wanted nothing to do with God. Rather, they selfishly hoarded all that he had given them for themselves. Rejecting Jesus, they threw him outside the city gates and they killed him on a Roman cross. And thinking him finally dead, they rejoiced. The vineyard is now ours. However, much to their surprise, their own words spoken to Jesus just a couple days before, came true. He has put those wretches to a miserable death and let out the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the fruits in their seasons. The Father gives all who believe in him and his son Jesus his vineyard and all that they'll ever need to bring him the fruits that he desires, all the while knowing that he will continue to provide for all of their needs. In 1976, God's people, the founding members of First Lutheran, followed him in faith. Recognizing all they had was actually God's, they boldly committed to extending the vineyard 
to reach the masses of Calvert County with the truth of God's Word, faithfully using God's gifts, new vines took root in 1974, planted in the vineyard of Al and Sally Plush's living room. And then two years later, they grew and eventually were planted at the intersection of Route 2 and Route 4. And the cross of Christ has shone brightly for almost 50 years now through the actions of God's people gathered into His presence here at First Lutheran Church. My brothers and sisters, it has never been easy over those years. There have always been challenges for us. But through it all, through it all, God our Father has always provided for His people's needs as they have sacrificed to joyfully proclaim God's Word and enthusiastically share Christ's love throughout Southern Maryland. And today, the legacy established in part by Jim and Ardeth continues to grow. As we follow him in faith, through the uncertainty that lies before us in this day, we confidently trust that God will continue to produce the fruits that he desires, to grow his kingdom as we await that glorious day when Jesus returns to join us all together in the eternal kingdom of heaven, the new creation. And until then, may we all live in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ as it uplifts our spirit and uplifts our souls. Amen.